a few reflections on the fifth Sunday of Easter. The title that I given to these reflections is Love as Answer to Hatred. A dominant feeling of Easter is a sense of belonging to the person of Jesus. In fact, along with a sense of excitement which is pervading during the Easter season, there is an encouragement to cling on to the person of Jesus. Moreover, there is no other person in the world who has caught the imagination of people so deeply and drawn to himself after his death so powerfully than the person of Jesus. It is all because of Easter. Therefore, as we read the word of God on this Sunday, we are invited once again to make a commitment to the person of Jesus with love. I have three points to share. The first one is God chooses the right people at the right time. The first reading of today taken from Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 verses 21 to 27 gives us a detailed journey of Saint Paul and Saint Barnabas. They are on a life transforming journey. Through them, God is making all things new around them. Every person who comes in contact with them are touched and transformed and converted to the faith of these disciples. Both Paul and Barnabas go through a lot of hardships, but through prayer and fasting are able to see the growth of the church and appoint elders who would take care of those little communities to remain in the steadfast love of the Lord. What is fascinating is the capacity of the disciples of the word of God, both Paul and Barnabas, in preaching the gospel in various kinds of people and in different geographical locations. There is nothing that can stop them. Once a person has experienced a transformation, nothing can deter the person from doing what he or she is intended to do. All the more, God had gifted St. Paul with an erudite intelligence and flavor for languages, as he came from three cultures, Hebrew, Greek and Latin. To continue God's work, God knows to choose the right people at the right time. The second point is, following in the footsteps of the Lord in his physical absence. The style of Jesus' functioning has always been communitarian. Since the start of his public ministry, Jesus selected a group of closely knit disciples who would be with him, walk with him, teach with him, heal with him, eat with him, and even suffer with him. All through his life, Jesus would teach and take special lessons to his disciples and even educate them by sending them on a mission of teaching, preaching, healing and driving out demons. Jesus believed in the power of the community, the power of being together and working together. Being together is commitment, a sign of courage, endurance and strength. The early Christian communities continued to imitate what Jesus had followed and taught them. With the power of the spirit of the resurrection, the disciples now dispersed in different geographical locations continued to live what Jesus had taught them. The disciples of our Lord appoint elders or presbyters, deacons and others to carry out the works of the community. The new Christian communities become the symbols of the reign of God. The disciples exhort, encourage, facilitate and even help them how to face calmly the difficulties. If we follow what our Lord has taught us, then we are in the right path and our life in the community is taken care of. When we rely on ourselves and forget the power of the divine presence, then we are doomed to fail. The third point, it is love that binds all, all our Christian communities. What is that aspect that guides the early church in spite of its origin in varied 
geographical locations, it is love. Just imagine yourself, the early church sprang up not in one fixed location, but in different locations when the apostles began to preach. They have to be bound together with one heart and one with one soul. They have to be grounded in love, to be union with one heart and one mind. That is where this distinctive character of love comes in. Love is expressed in concrete service. Jesus' teachings are based on this foundation of love. By our love, we glorify the Father. And by our love, all disciples will know that we are His people, that He is our God. The early Christian communities were founded on this solid foundation because only love is credible and would keep the communities together. Jesus gives a beautiful commandment in today's Gospel reading. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. So you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John chapter 13 verses 34 to 35. All evil can be overcome by good and all hatred can be overcome by love. When Jesus loved, he did it gen generously, abundantly and magnanimously. There is no limit to loving someone. Jesus knew only love can win the world, men and women of this world. As the psalm of today says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. Psalm 145 verses 8 to 9. We must be conscious of this power of love. Only then can we think about how best to help ourselves in overcoming hatred and violence in us, in our communities, in our families, in our world and in, in our country as well. A few questions for our reflections. Jesus calls his disciples little children. What is the experience of Jesus in your life? The second. Jesus wants you to experience everything, yet he says, where I am going, you cannot come. Hearing this, are you feel confused, heartbroken, abandoned or curious? The third one, what does it mean to you, this new commandment of love? Finally, let's conclude these reflections with a short prayer. Almighty God, thank you for the work my hand may find on find this day. May I find gladness in all its toil and difficulty, its pleasures and successes, and even its failure and sorrow. I would look always away from myself and behold the glory and the need of the world that I may have the will and the strength to bring the gift of gladness to others, that with them I stand to bear the burden and heat of the day and offer you my work as well as I may accomplish it in your praise. We make this prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen.